All right. Well, good morning, everyone. I good am Mary. Good morning. <laughs> I am Mary and Jimmy, the chair of the MDA MDTA Capital Committee and conducting this meeting's this morning's okay. meeting. I hereby call the meeting of the Capital Committee to order at 9 a.m. In accordance with the live streaming law, this meeting is being conducted video, via video conference, easy for me to say, and live streamed on the MDTA Capital Committee page. As a reminder, all members of the Capital Committee will have their video active during the entirety of the meeting. However, I do ask that to minimize background noise that everyone on the line mute your phones or computers. Anyone who is presenting or answering a question to turn your video on and audio on, unmute, of course, and when done, please video off and audio back on mute, unless, of course, you're a member of the committee. There are no members of the public or elected officials or media that have pre-registered to comment. Therefore, we can move on to agenda item number one, which is approval of the open session meetings of January 5th, 2023. So I will look for Make a, a motion to approve, uh, Mr. Chairman. Member Cox motions for approval. Is there a I'll second? second it. I'll second it, Mr. Chairman. Member Gaines seconds. All in favor say aye. 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 All right. We got all of us, so now we can move on to Mr. Wolf, who will give us our major projects presentation. Mr. Wolf, you are on. There he is. Yep. Good morning. Good morning, members. <clears throat> uh, for the record, my name is Brian Wolf. I'm Director of Project Development for the Office of Engineering and Construction. Um, I'm here today to provide a, a brief presentation on one of our upcoming contracts. It is KB3005. Uh, this is uh, repairs and subgrade rehabilitation uh, along I-695 in the uh, Sparrows Point uh, section of uh, Baltimore uh, near the Bear Creek Bridge as well. Uh, if you look at your materials, we'll go to, to uh, slide two. Uh, this just provides some location maps to, to help um, delineate where the project's located. And you can see that the project limits are going to start uh, just by the Broning Highway uh, interchange on I-695 and then extend to uh, just south of the Maryland 151 uh, interchange on I-695. Um, yeah, within that limit, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we have some bridges, uh, one bridge over the Trade Point Railroad, uh, another bridge located over Maryland 157, and also the Bear Creek Bridge. Uh, moving on to slide three, uh, just some background on the, uh, the facility here. Uh, the existing pavement is a 12-inch continuously reinforced concrete pavement. Uh, it's on a graded aggregate base. Um, we do have an area within the project limits where we have some settlement concerns. Uh, and over the years, we have overlaid that section uh, with asphalt. Uh, and you'll see a slide later on here that kind of shows the limits of that work. But we've done that a number of times in that location. Uh, and we've also had to install some temporary barrier to help uh, readjust the, the roadway profile and bring it back up to grade. Uh, in addition, at the, the three bridges that I identified within the limits, we have had some ongoing uh, damage to the abutment back walls uh, in those locations, and that'll be part of the work that will be addressed in this contract. Uh, so moving on to slide four. Uh, so the purpose and need for this, is to, obviously, is to address the, the ongoing back wall uh, deterioration at the three bridges. Uh, as well as to, uh, again, address the settlement issues at the, um, uh, along 695. Um, and this has all been based on the various studies that we've conducted over the years. We've done extensive geotechnical um, investigations in the area, especially around the settlement location, to identify uh, what may be causing this. Uh, we've also conducted uh, some studies in it to determine why the back walls have been uh, showing signs of deterioration over the years. Uh, and so we felt, uh, given the, the 
uptick and the increase in the development of the Trade Point Atlantic area. Uh, we felt it was appropriate to do this project now uh, to try to get ahead of the the truck volumes that we're anticipating in this this section of the uh, interstate. Uh, so moving on to slide five. Uh, hey, so the overall of the scope of question. Sure. Chairman. Go for uh, it. Brian, I mean, this what you're doing here is is rehabilitation, but it's really going to help where the trade point uh, uh, Atlantic Railroad is as far as upgrades and so forth. Is that true or not true? So we're we're doing some repairs to the bridge, but we're not doing any uh, major improvements. Uh, if you're referring to um, like a, uh, upgrading the bridge or a bridge replacement, we're not we're not changing any kind of uh, configuration. We're just addressing the the deterioration that's occurred at the bridge. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Go ahead, Mr. Wolf. Okay, so. Slide five. Um, this just provides a, a, a general overall scope of our of our work. Uh, we are doing some storm drain repairs as well, and so we've got some video inspections that'll be uh, part of the work. Um, again, the 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 big the 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 large portion of the work is going to be this subgrade stabilization that we're going to do, and and uh, we'll I'll get into a little more detail of that uh, again in a in a further slide here. Um, we're also going to be doing some general patching and repairs to the pavement. You know, some uh, traffic safety features will be replaced. Uh, and again, the back wall repairs, the deep abutments. And we're also going to pick up some of the additional structural repairs that have been identified from the uh, inspections over the years. So we'll try to grab as much as we can with those as well. Uh, you will note in the picture there at the bottom right, this is the area in, in the, the settlement. Uh, and you'll notice in the median barrier there, you're going to see that slight dip or curve there. And that's that's the ongoing settlement that we've been monitoring over the years. And that's what we're going to address with this contract. Hey, Brian, just a quick yeah. question since I'm, I'm a geotechnical engineer. Mm -hmm. love, love, I think you just threw that word in for my benefit anyway. Um, what what do the boring show in that area? I mean, are we over, are we over top of crappy soils? We, we are. Um, what? And this is going to go back into the history of the of the area. Okay. Um, back when Bethlehem Steel was here, this area originally was not. You know, the highway wasn't there. Um, but from what we can tell, it was used as a fill site for the various operations at the plant. Uh, and over the years, that was what was put in, and it filled in a, a marshy and wet area, essentially, an in, in old stream bed. Gotcha. Um, and then the roadway embankment was built on top of that. And now over the years in this particular area, we're seeing the, the issues of, of that construction where we're, we're having ongoing settlement. Um, and then we've been overlaying it. And we're simply, you know, certainly adding more weight to the embankment. It continues to settle. Uh, and so we felt again with the with the anticipated truck volumes that we would be seeing from Trade Point, we felt we should get this addressed now before we have heavy truck uh, loads on this section of pavement. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you move on to slide six, um, I'll try not to spend a lot of time on this slide. It's a lot of words. Um, I have a, a following slide that kind of goes over this, but this is the maintenance of traffic that we're uh, going to be using on the project, and and really it comes down to, to a couple of uh, couple of options that we're doing over on Bear Creek. We're going to be maintaining traffic within their respective uh, lanes, so inner loop and outer loop will stay in on their in their loops. Uh, but we are going to be implementing lane closures and lane shifts, uh, and that's to accommodate the back wall and deck work on Bear Creek. Uh, to get those repairs done, but we're going to maintain traffic. Uh, once we get over to the north side of Bear Creek, uh, in phase one, we're going to be constructing two crossovers uh, in the median area, one just north of Bear Creek, I'll call it, and then one just north of the Trade Point Railroad Bridge. 
Uh, and so what that's going to allow us to do is on the remaining bridges and the settlement area, we felt that it was a quicker, more efficient way to be able to shift traffic off of the loops one at a time and allow all that back wall, back wall work and the, the work at the settlement area to be done in each loop. Uh, it gave the contractor more room and more more access to get the work done more quickly. And so we implemented crossovers on the north side of the, the project limits. And so what this is just showing is that Bear Creek might have, will have a lane closure on the inner loop in say phase one, but over in the settlement areas in the back walls, we're in a contraflow uh, situation where we've utilized the crossovers. And so that's what, what this table is, is trying to convey here. So I won't try to explain it here. It might be easier to just sort of show it in the next slide here, which is a graphic of it. So if you go over to slide seven, this is the graphic that kind of corresponds with that, uh, that table. And so you can see in phase two, um, we're putting the inner loop to the outside and we're moving the uh, outer loop to the outside and we're building the median first. Uh, and that's at the Bear Creek. But then over in the the more of the sort of trade point Atlantic area where we have the other two bridges in the settlement, we're going to be doing a contraflow operation where we push a single lane in each direction to the uh, outer loop side and we build the inner loop portion of the settlement repair and the back walls on those two bridges. Brian, is is settlement sure. repair going to be driving new piles? Yes, and, and I keep saying in the next slide, the next slide. But oh, sorry. What, what, no, 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 no. You're 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 fine. What <laughs> what we're planning to do here, and we evaluated a bunch of options on how to address this. Um, initially, we had looked at, I'll call it maybe a traditional approach, and, and Federal Highway has documentation on this, where you essentially remove the entire embankment. Uh, down to original soil, and then we were looking at actually installing a pile foundation with a load transfer slab on top of that, gotcha. and then re replacing the embankment on top of that, so that it would be a pile-supported embankment. Gotcha. Um, but we ultimately settled on a, a sort of an innovative option, similar but rather than do all the excavation and the hauling of material and things like that, very costly operation, we're actually going to install the piles through the existing embankment. Makes sense. And we're going to build the slab at grade. Um, it's something we we found through some research. Uh, there was a paper done several years ago from uh, at the International Bridge Conference. Uh, Pennsylvania Department of Transportation used a similar concept for sinkhole issues. They spanned over a sinkhole, and we had this evaluated for this particular option, and we feel it's going to work. Um, it gets the live load off the embankment um, and takes the loads down to the more competent material with the piling. We should eliminate any further settlement from live load and, and uh, things like that. So these these are um, bearing piles, right? They're they're getting basically you're driving them to good soils. There's not like rock or anything. Correct. Good We're, soils, right? Correct. And you don't, and you don't have a because of the fill there. You don't have a whole lot of obstructions or anything crazy like that. No, we didn't find anything like that. Um, I will say, however, um, well, I should back up and say there are obstructions. What we have is uh, there was a bridge, a viaduct structure that was originally built in this area before the roadway embankment was built. Gotcha. They never removed the piers. The piers are actually buried in the embankment. We located them, um, and so we've worked around them in the area of this settlement. Cool. Sounds exciting. I want to see pictures. Okay. <laughs> we will certainly have pictures. And maybe a you know visit. Remember, Cox likes to get out on cold days, so. <laughs> so if you move on yeah, that, to slide that's eight. Exciting. So if you move on to slide eight, um, you'll see this kind of delineates the limits of the uh, pile supported embankment work that we'll be doing. Um, and you can see the 
the majority of the roadway in this section is all again the, the continu continuously reinforced pavement. But you can see here where we've overlaid this section over the years due to the settlement. And so uh, our work here with the pile pile supported slab, that's going to address that issue. And we should hopefully be away from from having to do overlays in the future here. Okay. Um, and so moving on to the next slide. This is just a um, graphic that shows one of the detours that we're going to implement uh, in order to facilitate the construction of this pile supported slab. Um, it might be a little hard to see, but there's a little blue area just above the uh, location of the settlement. We have to shut that ramp down. It's a single lane ramp. So we'll be shutting that down to facilitate that work. Uh, and so we're going to be implementing a detour uh, for the, uh, I'll call it the southbound or the inner loop 695 traffic. Uh, and the red line there just delineates the detour that will be implemented to get traffic around that site. Uh, then if you move on to the next slide, again, uh, we have to have one of the ramp areas detoured again in the settlement area. This is for the outer loop traffic uh, on 695. And again, we're implementing a very similar detour uh, to uh, get traffic around the project site. Brian, how, how long are the those detours? Were that, was that the five weeks I think I saw for the phases? So it, it's five months. Uh, five, we're estimating five, five months five. for those. Yeah. Correct, yep. Five months, that's what I meant, sorry. Okay, it's a long time, but. It, it is, uh, but we felt that was a, a, a more efficient way to get the work done versus trying to do this pile slabbed in in stages across the roadway. We thought, thought this was a much more efficient and quicker uh, process. Make, makes sense. Out of stupid curiosity, how, you know, what does the roads that we're detouring onto, what are they like? They're state highway routes. Uh, and so we've coordinated heavily with state highway. Um, we've had to coordinate with them and Trade Point Atlantic because um, as part of a, the Trade Point Atlantic uh, improvements over there, they're they're working with state highway doing roadway improvements in the same area. Uh, so we've been coordinating with them on this work um, and SHA has been reviewing our our detour plans and, and our MOT plans that affect their two routes. So we're we should be in good shape for them. Cool. I just don't want them to start asking us to pay for their road after we beat it up. Understood. And, and they're implementing, I think, some 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 of these types of detours right now with with the truck traffic to do their uh, trade point. Your know, trade point has to do access uh, improvements, and and that's some of the work that they're doing now. Cool. Thanks, Brian. Mm -hmm. Hey, Brian. Where's where's Trade Point Atlantic on this on this uh, overview? <clears throat> so if you look at if you go to slide, I think it's slide 10, that would be the the uh, outer loop detour. Trade Point Atlantic is going to be in the bottom left area. So where the legend is. OK, that's yeah. that. Yes, that's where the all the water. Yeah, OK, correct. Yes, that's the, the warehouses and, and all their clients uh, are in that area. Mm -hmm. OK, thank you. Mm -hmm. So if you go to the last slide, this is slide 11. Uh, this is just our uh, anticipated construction estimate. We're in the range of around 45 million. Um, and then we have an anticipated schedule here. We are at the PSNE stage right now, uh, working through those final steps to uh, get the contract documents to procurement. Uh, and then we uh, will advertise hopefully in April. And then you can see here we Hope to have notice to proceed in October of this year so we can start construction. With cool. that, that is the end of my presentation. Are there any any additional questions? Sounds you, uh, how much uh, are we saving by by doing by the method we're using as opposed to digging everything out and hauling it away? I mean, that's got to be a big savings. It was, yes, and I don't have the exact figure, but it was in the millions. 
Uh, I'm sure. Yeah, I, no doubt. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a significant amount of excavation that we were looking at, and that's what precipitated us to go back and do, I'll call it some value engineering internally right. to see if there was another option available. It was, it was a cost savings, but a ske significant schedule savings as well. Right. Right. Plus, the, I mean, you throw the fuel chart, CR charts on top of all that. It's it's crazy. Member Gaines might need some dirt on a project, though. He might like the other That's way. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> I know I do. <laughs> That's good. Good stuff, Brian. I, I I asked my question, so I, I appreciate appreciate that. Member Enzer, do you have any so, uh, questions you want to throw at him? No, I think everything looks pretty good. Member looks Cox. Good. I guess member Cox, member Cox is, does not have any further questions. So, well, thanks, Brian. Um, I guess with that, absolutely. I hope everybody uh, stays warm with this little bit of a cold snap we got over the next couple of days. So, be careful, be safe, and I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Member second. Oh, there you go. Member Gaines moves. Member Enzer seconds. All in favor of adjournment, say aye. 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 Member Cox mouth that I saw it. So. <laughs> All right. Everybody be safe. And thank you All very right, much, thank you. Brian. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Bye.